okay so now uh, let's talk about long run uh, competitive equity okay so long run is a period when uh, you know there is some flexibility that firms enjoy okay so let me tell you what kinds of flexibility firms enjoy so the first flexibility is basically they can exit the firm if they are already inside the sorry they can exit the industry so if they are already inside the industry they can choose to leave the industry is that okay fine the second kind of uh flexibility the firms enjoy is to choose their production functions okay uh, or basically choose the technology whichever technology they like all the technology is freely available all the knowledge is freely available you know so the knowledge is freely available whichever knowledge you want you can pick that knowledge use that knowledge to produce output is that okay fine and uh, you know another kind of flexibility that we allow is that they can actually pick any potential firm you know basically any firm which is outside the industry can can actually pick any knowledge okay or basically any production function it likes you know which can be used to produce this particular output and enter the industry okay of course firms always also has an option to you know uh, to basically uh, combine the production functions also let's say for like for example you know for a certain level of output this particular technology does well for beyond a certain level of output that particular technology does well so you know they can actually choose it in that way as well is that fine okay so basically there is a full flexibility in that sense firms can exit the industry enter the industry choose the technology uh, throw the technology combine the technology you know all kind of flexibilities there is that okay now if you are talking about combining the technologies do you agree because all firms have access to the same knowledge whether they are inside the industry or outside the industry do you agree all of them will choose the best technology make sense nobody will choose something inefficient do you agree so we can just assume that there is some best cost function available which every potential firm will choose is that okay clear to everyone okay so there is some best cost function available which every potential firm will use whether you are inside the industry or outside the industry you will choose that cost function only so we can reduce our problem a little bit okay because i mean otherwise it's a two stage problem the first stage is choose the best technology basically find the best technology from all the available technologies which is also not difficult you know it is like a two plant problem or a three plant problem you have five plants or three plants you know you you just want to uh you know uh choose uh how you want to utilize those plants in the best possible way okay so that's that kind of problem you have to solve first okay then find the best cost function out of it and then you do this problem make sense okay so of course you you must have seen in the videos you know that problem as well right you know when you are you are you have access to two plants and uh and uh, you know how you minimize cost okay uh, so that is also there in the videos okay so basically that's your first step and then the second step is with this best cost function available you know how many firms will be inside the industry now notice that this cost function is available to everyone whether you are inside the industry or outside the industry so i am sitting outside the industry i know how to produce using the best technology i can any time choose that cost function and enter the industry is that okay fine now what do you think will happen in such a scenario in the equilibrium
profits will be driven to zero absolutely because if in the industry firms are earning profits and this technology is freely available to any outsider as well so that outsider will think of this as an opportunity will take that technology and enter the industry and when that particular outsider will enter the industry the supply curve will shift to the right because now at the same price there will be a higher supply there will be one more supplier who will be supplying the same amount of output and that will reduce the price and that will bring the profits down and this will keep on happening till the profits are there in the industry is that okay and if the firms are earning losses making losses then the firms that are there in the industry would like to exit yes or no and this exit will lead to shifting of the supply curve to the left and this will re re increase the price okay and that would lead to you know reduction in the losses or you can say increase in the profitability okay and this will keep on happening till the profits go to zero so that means you know now we have one more condition required for long run equilibrium that firms will be earning you know firms will be choosing quantities which will maximize their profit but that maximum profit will also be zero is that fine okay now if you remember in the short run problem uh the number of firms was fixed and it was given in the long run problem the number of firms is endogenous it is something which will be determined from the system is that okay so if you keep this in mind we can define the competitive equilibrium okay fine now first let me give you the data that you have okay we have the data okay on uh, the best cost function okay so let's say this is the best cost function okay and we also have data okay so if you if you want to put cq that's also okay okay and we also have data on um, uh, the demand okay so uh, so we know you know see so that you can write the direct demand or the inverse demand whatever it is doesn't matter pdq so these are the two things which are given to you and we want to define long run competitive equilibrium so each potential firm has this cost function is that okay because this is a technology which is available in the market anybody can take the technology and enter the industry make sense yes or no okay okay so let me now define uh, the equilibrium okay so the equilibrium is basically uh, it consists of the first thing is how many firms will be there in the industry n star okay because that's also endogenous now okay uh, p star okay basically at what price will have the long run equilibrium and then q1 star what will each firm produce okay so this is a long run competitive equilibrium if first okay uh, again the same requirements given price p star each firm that is producing in this industry must be maximizing its profit by choosing qi star is that okay so given p star q i star solves firm i's profit maximization problem okay so what is firm i's profit maximization problem maximize with respect to q i p star q i minus the cost c q i 
Is that okay? So each firm must be actually uh, uh, producing QI star that maximizes its profit. Have you all understood this? Okay. The second condition is okay uh, that each firm must be earning zero profit. So for all I P star QI star minus C of QI star is zero. Okay, and the third requirement is that demand must equal supply. That whatever is supplied, you know, at price P star, this particular point must also lie on the demand curve. Okay, uh, so P, D, summation I equals one to N star because there are N star firms, UI star must be equal to P star. Have you understood this? Any questions? Is that clear? Okay. Uh, so let's do a problem. Okay. Okay, so let's do let's do the problem that is actually there in um, one of the videos. Uh, you know, so I'll choose that cost function. Uh, so let me remember. Uh, so suppose uh, suppose the cost function is Q into Yes, you have seen this, right? No, you, have, you haven't seen this in the video? You haven't seen this in the videos? No, sir, seen, sir. We have seen it. Yeah. You must have seen it. It's there in the videos, this cost function. And I have told you, I have basically taught you in that video how to find the supply function for this. Yes, all of you have seen it, right? Okay, if you haven't seen it, please uh, just make sure you watch it later. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we'll find the long run uh, equilibrium in this case. Okay, uh, so so why don't you try it and then I'll, I'll tell you how to do it. Okay, I'll give you five minutes. If you want, you can watch the video again and and and, and uh, refresh. You know what? How to find the supply function? Okay, let me give you ten minutes. Okay, and then I'll do it. Okay. So if you want, you can watch the video also, and then and then try this. Okay. Uh, let me give you the demand function also. So basically. Uh, you have to find the supply and then find the demand. Uh, well, 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 then find the equilibrium. You know, uh, uh, long run equilibrium. Okay, so obviously you also need the demand function. Uh, so let's say the demand function is max of 12 minus Q comma zero. Okay, do it. You have 10 minutes. Sir, so your mic is off. <laughs> Sir, N star is 11 and P star is 1. 
side. Right? So there will be 11 forms, and each form will produce one unit, right? One unit, yes, yes. Sir. Okay, very good, very good. Yes, sir. Is, is everyone getting yes, it? Sir. But sir, that Q star will be, if, if Q star will be less than one, then it will be six, right? Sorry? If Q star will be less than one, then it, then P star will be six. No, no. Uh, are you giving me the long run competitive equilibrium or are you giving me the supply function? Uh, supply function uh, and price also, sir. So what is what is what is the long run competitive? Q star equal to when Q star will be one, then P star will be eleven. P star will not be eleven. P star will be one. Yeah, yes, sir. So one thing I wanted to ask. Uh, in this yeah. case, the marginal yeah. cost is not defined because the function is not differentiable, right? Yeah, yeah. Marginal cost at one is not defined. Elsewhere it is. Yes. So, so basically, uh, like we would, uh, we would just graph it and see that it's at the minimum to just confirm that it's basically happening. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's also one way to do it. You know, so I mean, uh, whichever way you like, you can actually use the graph also. I mean, it's, it's actually straightforward from the graph. Uh, but if you want, you can do the calculation and uh, find the supply and then uh, you know uh, just just make sure that uh, uh, that you know basically the supply that you are choosing at that supply the profit must be good. so what price will be good? and then just just figure out uh, figure out uh, basically uh, uh, you know the long run competitive using that you know so whichever way you like let me just tell you you know Actually, graph is very, very good. I mean, just use the graph, you get the solutions. Uh, so let me tell you how you can use graph to get the long run competitive equilibrium. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll just uh, plot uh, this situation for one firm, you know, because all the firms have the same cost function. So it is just going to work for all the firms. Okay, uh, so, uh, so what I'll do is I'll plot uh, the average cost. Okay, uh, so average cost is this thing divided by Q. Okay, and if you if you plot absolute value of Q minus one plus one, this is how it will look. Is that okay? This is the average cost. Okay, uh, this is uh, two. This is one. Okay, this is also one. Okay, and then uh, this has slope minus one. This has slope one. Okay, uh, is this clear? This is how average cost curve will look. Do you agree? Okay. What about the marginal cost? Well, uh, for Q less than one, you can write the cost function. For Q greater than one, also you can write the cost function. Take the derivative, you'll get the marginal cost. And if you plot the marginal cost, this is how it will look. Okay. And then at one, there will be a jump. Okay, this point is not included in the graph, and this point is also not included in the graph uh, because uh, because marginal cost is actually not defined at one. Okay, is that okay? Is everyone getting this? I think this is something that I also did in that video, right? Okay, okay. Now clearly, you know, if you if you actually see uh, any price greater than one cannot be a long run competitive equipment price the reason is because at any price greater than one you can make positive profits you know look at this you can make positive profit here here also you can make positive profit so your maximum profit will always be positive if price is greater than one yes or no because price is greater than the average cost, right? If price is greater than the average cost at so many quantities, then of course your maximum profit will be positive. Because if, if you can make positive profit somewhere, then maximum profit will always be positive. 
and you can see that price is greater than average cost at several places so as long as price is greater than one you can always make positive maximum profits so price can be either one or less than one yes okay so if for example price is less than one let's consider this case in this case you will always make losses because average cost is greater than price it's only at zero units of output you will make zero profit so firm would want to supply zero units in this case so what will be the aggregate supply zero units so this condition is met that they are making zero profit this condition is also met that at zero the profit is maximum but this condition is not met the reason is because when you are supplying zero units the demand curve will tell you that the price must be 12 yes or no and here the price is less than one so this cannot be an equilibrium is that clear now the only case that is left is price is equal to one okay and if price is equal to one in that case the maximum profit that you can make is at q equal to one because because everywhere else you'll be making losses i mean of course you can also choose uh, zero units at zero also you'll be making uh, zero profit at one also you'll be making zero profit so you have two maximizers so you have two choices for the optimal supply yes or no okay now now we can have a equilibrium you know the reason is because firms are willing to supply positive amount of output and they are earning zero profit so now we can just bring in those many firms which is sufficient to make demand equal to supply with one firm the total supply is one unit the price must be one so what is the total demand 11 so how many firms do we need so that demand equals supply well if each firm supplies one unit we need 11 firms and we are done is that okay have you understood this okay and by the way this is also in confirmation to you know in case you have done economics honors you have you must have seen in your uh, textbook you know uh, the long run competitive equilibrium price is where long run average cost is minimum and this is exactly where long run average cost is minimum yes or no so 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 we can uh, just uh, get the get the uh, form of the function in terms of the modulus function uh, the average cost and we can simply argue that the minimum happens at q equals to one and uh, argue that yeah can do that but you know i prefer to go by definition, definition. Right. Yeah. yeah so i mean i'm just i just gave you this fact because uh, uh because you know you must have seen that this is how it is explained in the books but i don't like that you know i i like to go by definition uh, so that is why i explain it in this way you know because it makes it very very clear you know why this is an equilibrium you know because that definition you know is that is not the definition that is actually a result okay and you know if you just remember the results then you'll have to remember a lot of results without understanding them now you clearly know why that is true okay because if price happens to be greater than long run average cost let me tell you why that is true you know it will be always true actually if price is greater than the minimum of long run average cost then you can make positive profit and if you can make positive profit it cannot be a long run equilibrium is that okay
because if price is greater than the average cost somewhere that means price is greater than the average cost at the minimum and if that is the case then you can make positive profit somewhere and if you can make positive profit somewhere that cannot be the long run competitive because one of the requirements for long run competitive equilibrium is that you should be earning zero profits okay so you don't have to memorize anything okay everything follows from the definition is that okay uh, but i would like you to actually go back to your textbook once in a while to just think logically why that is true okay don't uh, don't try and memorize those things okay i mean it's, it's not the way to uh, do things you know uh, just just go by the definition argue that why that is true is that clear okay okay so that's it you know i mean we have found the long run competitive equilibrium it's very uh, straightforward if you just use the graph uh, so uh, so p star is 1 okay uh, n star is 11 okay and q1 star equals q2 star equals equals q11 star equals 1 that's the long run competitive